Good morning, my name is Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey, and welcome to Tool Time Tuesday. Today I want to talk about the SMD, Diamore, IMSG. It's an impedance meter and it's also a signal generator. Uh, this is, we own a bunch, as you can see, we own a bunch of the Diamore mirrors, meters and we use them all the time. This is by far the one that we use the most. This one generates uh, test tone, but uh, what's different from the other meters on the market is this generates a tone and it lets you know the impedance of the speaker at the current tone. It also lets you know if you have, it's, it's so useful. It's got a few features built in. It's got a built-in pink noise generator. Um, the reason you want to know the impedance of the speaker while it's playing is if you have a speaker that's doing something strange or it's causing the amplifier to shut off, you could actually sweep tones to make sure it's not, the impedance isn't dropping too low. You can verify that the manufacturer specs are correct so that the speaker that you chose will work properly in your application. Another thing I like about it is when you're testing for speakers uh, on a factory amplifier, it'll show you the impedance of the speaker and it'll also show you if you have an open or short on the line. So if you're testing for a speaker and you can't get any sound, you'll see if you if you verify that you have the correct wires, it'll show you you have an open circuit and there's no load. So you'll know that that speaker is either blown with the voice coil open or you have cut wire or you have the wrong wire. Saves a bunch of time. I'm gonna go in the back and uh, hook it up and show you how well this meter works. We actually have two of them. I want to give a shout out to Tony D'Amore because I know he's a really, really busy man. He's dealing with Diamond Box. He's currently producing his new amplifiers. He's building a demo car for 2019. I sent him a message through Facebook letting him know I had a problem with my meter and I hadn't heard back. Within 24 hours, I had a tracking number. My meters are fixed and on their way back to me. Um, he took care of it, didn't even charge me for the service. Uh, so. That's, that's a company you want to deal with when the owner of the company you can have access to. And he, uh, one of the meters was my fault. Uh, the guy was using, one of my guys was, we have two of these because while this one was out for service, we uh, couldn't work without it, so we ordered another one. But it turns out that uh, one of my guys tried to test a speaker that was hooked up to a factory amplifier while the amplifier was on, and it destroyed the meter. Uh, Tony took care of that, and our AAM1 required a our AMM1 required a firmware update. He took care of that for us too. So great company to deal with. If I have any questions, this guy's always responds within a couple hours. He builds solid product. We've been using these meters for years, and the issue we had was 100% our fault, and he still took care of it. So how can you not deal with a company that takes care of their product and stands behind their product that way? Uh, I'm gonna run you through some of the stuff that the uh, IMSNG does, and hopefully you'll find it useful. Um, the fact that it generates pink noise is huge for us because we RTA all and scope all the cars that we work on. So feeding signal into your factory or amplifier or aftermarket amplifier, then you can see what's going on. Only using a small portable tool like this, and then on the other end we'll use our audio control uh, RTA, which is also portable. It's got a battery built in, so without having to bring cables or anything to the car. You can see on screen what's going on. You can see if your bandpass, if your full range. Um, frequency response, you can test subwoofer enclosures to see what the resonant frequency of the enclosure and see if the port is tuned properly. Bunch of stuff you can do with this meter. I'm gonna go in the back and I'll run you through some of the simple basic stuff. Okay, we're running our entry level speaker tester here. I have it set to 60 Hertz. We're also running the SMD meter here, also set to 60 hertz. There is no speaker attached, just attach the meter, so that's why it's saying it's an open circuit. Confirm there's our 60 hertz tone. You can see it's exact because it's teetering between 60 and 61 hertz, and we are at 60.9. Nice, clean sine wave. Now with our entry level tone generator, we're also set to 60 hertz. but the signal is not clean at all. See that? It's generating a square wave. And it's not that we're dropping, it's not that we're driving into clipping because we can lower the voltage here and it still remains a square wave. See that? So our millivolts, and as we increase it, 
1.7 volts, 1.1 volts. So it's, okay, it's an okay entry level tool, but it's a square wave. SMD meter gives you a beautiful sine wave to work with. So it just shows you the quality and the output of the SMD meter compared to the entry level meter, but it also costs 10 times more. This is a $30 piece, this piece is hundreds of dollars. Now we're gonna go ahead and run a few more tests so you can see how the meter operates. Here we have uh, one of our favorite tweeters. This is the Audio Frog GB15. Now if you look on the graph, at about 1.2K, we get a rise in impedance. So if you come over here and look on the screen of the meter, we're currently at 679 Hertz and we're just about four ohms. As we approach 1.2K, you'll see the impedance start to rise exactly like the documentation says. Then it's gonna drop back down. See, so the speaker's doing exactly what the document said it would do and the meter has confirmed that the speaker's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Now to the next step of the test. Okay, here we are testing on the RTA. As we vary the frequency, you see it moving across the screen. Now we're going to go ahead and activate pig noise. That's pretty damn good. Okay, I just want to demonstrate how powerful the amplifier inside the SMD meter is. We're running pick noise through a Sony subwoofer and it's clearly auditable. Now I got hand switch. So we're resting right at two ohms. We're gonna increase the frequency at 19 Hertz. We maxed out at uh, 9.6 ohms. 40 Hertz, we're back down to two ohms. We have our other peak of nine ohms at 58 Hertz. And back down to two ohms. Now we're gonna back it down again so we can see where our peaks were again. Okay, so 60 ohms. Twenty ohms. Sixty ohms and twenty ohms. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the math that comes with the paperwork, so we know what the resonant frequency of the enclosure is and what the port is tuned to. Okay, so now in closing, without getting way too technical, I'm trying to keep it as simple and basic, so anybody can grab this tool and use it. If we went by the numbers that you saw on the screen, this Sony GS woofer likes this enclosure. It's important that we were able to test the enclosure because we did not build this enclosure. We build most of the enclosure of the shop, but if a customer is on a budget, we're getting between 500 and 800 for a custom subwoofer enclosure. These enclosures could be had for less than $100. So the customer is on a budget, you drop the woofer in the enclosure, but you wanna make sure that the woofer can do its job in the enclosure. We tested it, that's why we used this enclosure with this Sony woofer. Because going by the numbers, we had an impedance rise at 20 Hertz, 
we had an impedance rise at 60 hertz, and then we had a drop in impedance at 33 hertz. So this woofer enclosure is tuned to 33 hertz. If you look at the paperwork that came with the meter, you'll see here's your peak, here's your peak, and here's your frequency of your port. He recommends setting the subsonic crossover to half an octave below the FB, FB being the center low frequency of the tune of the port. So when you do the calculation, that brings you down to 21.1 hertz. So Wolfer's gonna be happy. It's gonna play down below 30 hertz, but you don't wanna play it too low. So you wanna set your subsonic filter between 20 and 25 hertz. That way it doesn't get any frequency below that that could potentially destroy the woofer. So this Sony woofer is happy in this enclosure and it was proven by the meter. We know the meter's right because it's one of our go-to setups in the shop. So to recap, you do a sweep with the meter, you pay attention to your two peaks and the impedance drop in between those two peaks. So for us, it was 20, brought us up to, uh, the speaker is two ohms. So at 20, we went up to nine ohms. Then when we hit 33 ohms, it went down to 1.8 and then it went back up to nine at 60 Hertz. So 33 Hertz was our tuning frequency of our port. Our subsonic filter is set between 21 and 25 Hertz. And then uh, we would set a low pass filter of 80 hertz. Wolfer's happy. Thank you. Hope this video helped. Uh, hope it, I kept it nice and simple so everybody could understand. And I hope I showed the importance of using a tool like this. Uh, we'll talk about the rest of the meters uh, in the following weeks. Thank you. Have a great day. See you next week.